what? Welcome to Ira's Everything Bagel, where I talk with intriguing people about everything, their passions, pursuits, and points of view. Dementia seems to have replaced cancer as a new scare word, but does it have to be? Well, there's another way of looking at what is becoming a major challenge in today's world. My guest will know. She is Marilyn Rakel, author of Don't Walk Away, A Care Partner's Journey. It's available on Amazon. For everything about Marilyn, the book, go to don'twalkaway.net and you can follow her on Facebook and LinkedIn. And Marilyn, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. What uh, started you on this journey? I know it was your mom, but you clearly decided to share your lessons, for want of a better term, with others. What, uh, what were those lessons and why did you decide to write about it? Well, first of all, it was a long journey because I didn't, I, I had walked away at the beginning. Mother told us, when we get Alzheimer's, I want you to walk away. We're well, not going to remember she, you. She already knew that she was going to get it? She, well, it, it sort of ran in the family, lots in my father's side, some in hers. And so she said, when we get Alzheimer's, I want you to walk away. We're not going to remember you. So just go live your life and walk away. And my three, four brothers and sisters and I said, okay, that's what we'll do. Um, they lived in a good place. They were going to be taken care of. And so when I became mom's very reluctant caregiver, when mom was in her mid eighties, um, that's how I felt. And when dad died, we took her to a painting class to keep her occupied. And the paintings were astonishing. And I suddenly and very quickly realized, oh, I see, she's still here. She's still living with invention and wits and joy. And every time I showed the paintings to someone, their reaction was always the same. I had no idea. And so that was the genesis of the book, that I wanted people to not walk away. I wanted people not to be so frightened and scared. Um, I wanted them to take happy walk with me and mom um, in her journey with dementia, um, which is not a normal way to approach it. So it was a, our nine-year journey with, with dementia. Um, it was the most rewarding, remarkable thing I have ever done in my life. That's, that's uh, very profound. W were you surprised at your new approach to violating your mother's orders, which was walk away? Oh, absolutely. This is not how we were raised. Yeah. Um, but it was it it was so fascinating. So I started writing down every single thing we did. And I became I, I thought of at the beginning, I thought, well, of course, she looks forward to my visits because I'm her daughter. And then I quickly realized that, oh, actually, she's more far more invested in her new family in the facility where she lived right and then they i was lucky enough that they accepted me into their family so then i had six adopted new mothers um and they were just fabulous so that every day i learned something new and every day i learned more and and one of the things that surprised me ultimately the most was that the enduring personhood of people who live with dementia, that there are basic common human needs that we all share that never go away. The need for friendship and the need to laugh and the need to be of value and the need to give and receive love. These never go away. Different, expressed differently, but it was it was this ability to grow every single day that I got there um, that was opened my eyes to this new way of approaching it. And it was so restful. I would go to visit mom every day in assisted living because it was so peaceful, because it was so relaxing, because it was so much fun. Um, it, it became this constant source of knowledge and love and fun it's not something that most people associate with dementia and the thing about the book is it's all illustrated by her paintings and that was the key that the paintings were so interesting that that was that was what drew me in it it got me past all my fear almost immediately because the paintings were so fabulous do you think it helped that she was in a separate 
area, meaning that she was in a facility. In other words, if she lived under your, your roof, it would be a much more intense or stressful situation. Yes. But the fact that you're able to visit her in a new infrastructure, and though she had a technically, quote unquote, new family, it, it allowed you to relax. I think that has to be acknowledged, too. It's not. Yes, absolutely. Like, that is the most important reason I wrote the book. Um that is the why I wrote the book, that that mother was very lucky and she was among the very small number of people in this country who can afford a really good continuing care facility. Um, most home caregivers are operating without a net. They do not have the resources, the support they need. They're in some cases juggling um, family and jobs and the needs of their loved one. It is hard and we are not giving them the support they need, financial or moral. So that I wrote the book because the vast majority of people in this country don't want to talk or think about dementia, that they think of them as empty shells where someone used to live uh, with lives not worth caring about. And that if we can't change that, we're not going to actually give them the support they need to thrive and live with happiness. Because first you have to believe they can thrive and live with happiness. Um, and so that's really my goal is that I want to change that. I want to, to be a part of that new way of understanding and looking at dementia, that there's life there. there these are valuable people with lives to live. And that if we live them together, we're better for it. Yeah. I want society to walk to not walk away. Sure. Ideally, of course, you have the basic building blocks in, in, in the beginning uh, of being able to have them in some kind of facility that allows you to, to function in that way. And then unfortunately, as you mentioned, others have the person in the home or in the apartment, and it's a whole different dynamic. But It'd be great if everybody could do what, what you were doing with your mom. And her name was Jean, right? We well, are yeah, Jean. But you see, and I was thinking about this before before we met today, is that yeah. if the the key for me is that we were sharing joy because I was able to see who was there, that if you're a home caregiver, even one small step, even if there's something you can do during the day that shares joy, singing looking at the sunset, um, taking a walk. It it doesn't have to be like mom was who was living in this fabulous place that was incredibly helpful and, and loving and nurturing, but that there are all sorts of senior centers and memory cafes, and there are resources out there. But just that little step of taking time, even if it's five minutes during the day, to relax, to let go, and share joy. And it it helps. And once you do that, you want to do it more. And you want to do it more. So maybe then it's 10 minutes. But once mom um, didn't want me to leave, and she went to the elevator with me, and she, with every intention of leaving with me. And, and I couldn't just leave her there because she was looking at me with trust. And so I just immediately pivoted and we started singing and I started singing good night ladies and we went around and around the hall singing good night ladies and we went through all the nurses stations the residents started joining in and by the time we got back we we took three laps and by the time we got back to her apartment she did what she would always do she said don't work too hard and give me a hug and then I would leave but it was just that song that ability to sing together could be we had one song we sang all the time. So that it doesn't have to be huge. And 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 I don't mean to to diminish the incredible burden that home caregivers give have. Um that's what has to change in this country, but it won't change unless we believe that people living with dementia have value. I mentioned in the beginning, and you mentioned it or alluded to it in, uh, just a few minutes ago. It seems that every generation has its its new thing to worry about. So in prior generations, cancer was 
um, uh, just the boogie word. You wouldn't want to discuss it in the family. You, nobody want. Well, everybody was afraid of it. Now I think it's Alzheimer's. So in a way, it's good dementia th that you're talking about it and you're seeing and saying that there is hope because people who have it don't necessarily um, stop living. They do live and in fact find new ways of expressing themselves creatively or, or in other areas as well. Yeah. Your mom was in obviously in, in one area of art, but there's others in music and there's others and perhaps they're building um, something or they're creating, they're writing a, their own book or their, whatever it is, just happens to be different, yeah. express themselves in different ways. And so were you surprised when you first, when you first got that insight that there was, that she was still there? I mean, did it shock you, surprise you, make you happy? What was your reaction to when you first, and how did you discover that, in fact, she was still expressing herself? It, it didn't surprise me. I mean, the, the fact that the paintings were so interesting, that surprised me because she still, to her death, denied the fact that she painted. She thought it was a <laughs> stupid thing to do, um, only for children. Um, but, but to look at the painting, it was oh my gosh, this is really fascinating. So it, that was it. That was the one thing where it's like, I was surprised with that. But then it's, and, and when I start sharing, we were sharing joy because it was how I was seeing her that changed. That before that, I wasn't seeing the person. I was only seeing the loss. And I wasn't hearing the thought. I was only hearing the confusion. And if that's what you're focused on, that's all you're going to see. Mm -hmm. So I was suddenly seeing mom again. And it was so much fun that 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 it that was it. I it was like it was like one day I was really surprised. And then it was just this constant discovery. Well, did she have a knack for painting prior to dementia? No, she painted when she was six. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, and, and it was interesting because everyone in her family, mom played an instrument, people wrote poetry, people sang, but painting, not so much. No, that wasn't done. And I asked her sister, her younger sister, um, Louise, who lived to 100, um, and I said, did you ever paint? She said, no. <laughs> but that was it. So that it was um, totally unexpected. Um, and maybe that was why mother denied the fact that she ever painted. It was like, because they were strict Scottish Calvinist and, um, you know, in other, words, in other words, no joy. <laughs> well, very little. Yeah. Well, no, they were very funny, but, but around right. issues of death and illness, you don't mention them. Just, right. just don't mention them. Um, and so this was, this was our cancer that in growing up, so many people in the older generations had gotten it that there was always this sort of undercurrent of, okay, who got it this time? Who's next? How are they doing? Um, and it went down every generation, fewer and fewer, but it was always sort of there, which was mother's, I think, reason for saying, walk away, just mm -hmm. walk away. You're going to be fine. Did you ever find out how she started painting there? Was it someone that was on staff? Was it one of one of the other people staying there? Or how did she begin that process? Oh, there was a painting class called Elderwise, and they had oh, this okay. weekly painting class for people living with memory loss. And so, and it was interesting that mother, when she, she didn't want to go, so I always had to take her there, otherwise she wouldn't go. And, but once she sat down, it was the companionship of the table that she enjoyed. It was being with all those people that she liked. Um, and, so that sometimes she, and she was really fast when sometimes when she would finish her painting, she would get up and she'd walk around and then she'd see these people at the table and she said, Oh, may I join you? <laughs> so then I would get two paintings for yeah. the same model. And, and so it was just um, this really fortunate thing that there was this program because, or there could have been singing, there could have been instruments, there could have been I mean, we we once you do one thing, then you discover all sorts of fun things you could do together. But it was that ability to share joy and to be able to see her. Um, I talked to someone once who was telling me about his wife that he was visiting at a at nursing home, and he said, "When I see her, she tells me she loves me, and she kisses me, 
And when I look in her eyes, there's nothing there. And I leave in tears. And I thought, why could I, he not see what I most likely would have. And I think it's because his entire framework was lost. That's all he could see was lost. But once mother started and I started sharing joy, then I could see her. So she really expand, not only expanded her horizons, she expanded your horizons as well. Oh, yes. She completely changed my life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was it was astonishing. I mean, I came from this emotionally, I think you could say constricted family um, where you didn't express them. You didn't express emotions. And this was mom and me as care partners. It was all that love that was so locked in for all those years was able to express itself. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Did you have an yeah. opportunity to talk with her art instructor about your mom's progress or the fact that she had this interest in painting and, and these are wonderful paintings? No, they were very busy. They had, you know, a table full of people. Um, but, and it was interesting also because I'm the, I was fascinated with what she was painting and they were not as fascinated with what they were painting, but as with what they painted. So I kept track of, you know, I have pictures of every single model that they were painting because I was so fascinated. Because at the beginning, when she was painting a flower, when she saw a flower, she painted a flower. But then about a year in, she started to transform them. So a zucchini became a dragon. Um, <laughs> and, and all sorts of, and most of them had faces. And so after a while, I realized that these were not literal paintings, that these were expressing her emotions at the time she painted them. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just so fascinating that I just wanted to see it. I just wanted to be there. And then I would do art exhibits and then people would just go, I had no idea. What was the reaction of your siblings to your discovery? Um, okay, this is a... <laughs> <laughs> um, two, my sister lives in New York and my younger brother in San Francisco and my sister and my brother, another one live here. Um, I think there was still amount of a fair amount of fear of being around the whole issue of dementia. And because I was designated the family caregiver, because there were no jobs at the time I was looking for one then I had no choice but to be there. I think if I'd had a choice, I wouldn't have done it, but I didn't have a choice. So it was that constant being there that I started to slow down and to listen and to observe. And what was interesting is that before dad died, mom wanted the best for dad and dad wanted the best for mom and their needs became my needs. So I wasn't experiencing loss or sadness, I was experiencing shared needs. Um, and if it hadn't been for the painting, it would probably have changed that way. Because I was always, mom's words were always in the back of my mind, walk away, walk away. You know, looking at the clock was like, okay, walk away. Um, so it was, um, it, it took a while, but once it did, it was just, and, and the, the women, the ladies, the, the ladies of assisted living, I call them. Her, her <laughs> companions, her companions sounds, were sounds like a church. Her ladies yeah, of assisted yeah, living. Yeah, <laughs> and and I started. I, I would come up with things I could do to make them all happy when I would arrive. So I started giving everyone shoulder massages, and they wouldn't know. I always asked permission first, and they wouldn't always know what I meant. But they would always take their cue from the person next to them who was so happy, mm -hmm. and. One woman, Jane, she said, oh, you have such happy hands. Um, and the best compliment I have ever received in my entire life came from Gloria, who came up to me and she said, do you tuck your wings in a handkerchief when you're not here? <laughs> now, I want to go back because you did not answer my question. What right. was the reaction of your siblings to your discovery of your mother's art? Not so much interested. Interested, not so much. Interesting. So, yeah. I mean, not so much as I'm saying interesting, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you're far removed. Yeah. And so it doesn't have the impact that it had on you. Yeah. And I, I think my sister in New York, who's an artist, and her daughter's an artist, they were fascinated because this is what they were doing. Um, 
But I would the imagine, rest, it was. Yeah, I imagine the other ones were just simply saying, "Oh, that's nice that she does art." And yeah, that's nice. They, yeah, yeah, they don't get the the emotional connection or the the uh, perspective that you got dealing yeah. with it on, on a regular basis. And again, it's called. Don't walk away a care partner's journey. And I like the title because you were referencing earlier caregiver, but in the title of the book, it's care partner. Yeah. And I think that's a deliberate decision on your part to, yeah. to rename it. Well, and it was, and it, there was a specific moment when I made that transition that mom's paintings after about a year started to me deteriorate. They started to look like she was losing interest. They were scratchy lines and the same colors and same image basically. And so one day I got there really early and we did everything she loved to do. We played Scrabble, which we did every day. Um, we looked at the view, we took a walk and we just enjoyed ourselves. And when then I took her to the painting class and her painting completely changed. All of a sudden warm animal images appeared. And and that's when I went, oh, I see, I have a role to play here. We're partners in this. And that's when I realized that I wasn't giving care to someone. We were building a life together. To, we were working together. Um, mm -hmm. And that's when I made that transition. You mentioned Scrabble, and most people would think a person with dementia can't play Scrabble, but I guess you did. Well, we played Scrabble every day, and, and at the beginning of it, she was, we were very competitive. Um, so <laughs> once she almost beat me, it was like, oh, my God. Um, but near near the end of her life, because we were playing Scrabble, at that point, making words was difficult. So we had just started adding up the scores because mm -hmm. we were competitive. So who got the higher score? Um, and we were playing Scrabble, and she asked me if dog was a word. And then she stopped, and she said, you know, sometimes your brain just gets in the way. And then she made jewel on the triple. Amazing. And so sometimes now when I'm having a hard time figuring something out, I'll just stop. And I'll say, sometimes your brain just gets in the way and then it'll come to me. <laughs> Very good insight, actually. <laughs> Yeah. It yeah. Does. So she was always that was the other thing that some people say, OK, you became the mother. She became the daughter. Mother was always my mother. Sure. She was always teaching me things. Always. Yeah. I mean, you were always partners, but you were also still mother daughter in the way we think of mother and daughter as well. Yeah. I just want to go back to, again, the stigma that seems to be around dementia, Alzheimer's and the fact that people, I think, will be uncomfortable initially in dealing with someone who has that. And how, what are your recommendations for how do people just get a comfort level with it, let alone go beyond as you did and write about in your book. Again, it's called Don't Walk Away, A Care Partner's Journey. Slow down. Realize that it's not about you. It's not about how you would feel if you had dementia. They have dementia, not you. And mother was light years ahead of me. She was going on living her life. And it took me a while to realize that, okay, that's what she's doing. She's living her life. Um, let go of the person who used to be and embrace the person who is with you in the moment. Um, the moment is really quite peaceful when you get the hang of it. Listen, listen and ask questions. For years, she would come up with one question over and over and over and over again. What do you think Seattle is going to be like in 50 years? And at first I would come up with ideas about what it would be like. And then I thought, Okay, if she keeps asking me this, it must mean something to her. So I asked her what she thought it would be like. Oh, all of a sudden, these wonderful ideas started flowing. She said, maybe we'll all fly. Maybe we'll be underwater. And we were envisioning laps of water in the, the, in C outside Seattle. I mean, it's going where they're going, asking them, and then hop on for the ride. That's uh, very... Very sage advice. When you went to the assisted living facility, and you mentioned the other women there, did they all remember you each time you came back, or did you did you have to reintroduce yourself? How did that work for everyone, including your mother? Yeah, it, even with mom. I mean, sometimes I mean, sometimes she knew I was her daughter, and sometimes she didn't. But but and the same with with the others. They wouldn't necessarily know who I was, but they were always glad to see me, and that's all that mattered. Mm -hmm. So 
when I got there, um, we would sit down. They would ask me to join them. We would sit. We would chat. Um, there was one woman named Marilyn, and it was our joke because I always say, hi, Marilyn. She'd go, hi, Marilyn. Um, <laughs> um, but it was it didn't matter that she knew who I was or that they knew who I was. They, it was all that mattered is that they were happy to see me. So there was, and I was happy to see them. Yeah. So there was joy in that human interaction or initial connection, even if they didn't know who you were. Right. That need for friendship. And even though they had friendship among themselves, somebody new coming in was not perceived as a threat or a confusion, but really just someone to make a connection with. Yeah, there was one woman named Flora, um, and every time I, I got there, I would give her a kiss on her forehead, and then she would turn to me and she said, you are my joy. Um, <laughs> she, she had this wonderful Italian accent. Um, it was, I mean, these were all individual, interesting people. They were all different. Um, and Mother had two really close best friends, um, Phyllis, who never spoke, and Kathleen, who was very stirring. And the three of them sort of met in the middle and they were always looking for things to do. Um, and once we went up on the roof and they were listening to the birds, they said, do you think they talk to each other the way we do? And they were having this wonderful conversation. And then when we left, Kathleen turned to me and she said, we enjoy each other, which I thought was really important. And it, and it was- They had friends. Yeah. Uh, Friendship. Uh, before I let you go, what, what what do you want people to take from the book? If there's one or two main points that you want to hammer home about your book, again, Don't Walk Away, A Care Partner's Journey, available on Amazon, what, what would those two or three points be? People living with dementia are valuable human beings, and they need our support to thrive and to live with happiness. And if we give them that support, they can, that you have to believe that these are whole human beings and that we share a lot, um, that to enjoy the moment, to just relax and just start a conversation and see where it goes. And every time you do that, something more will happen and more will happen and your lives will become richer and richer. And if you can do this, not only will our society be better, but you will be a much happier human being. Well, that's a great way to leave it. My guest has been Marilyn Rakel, author of Don't Walk Away, A Care Partner's Journey. It's available on Amazon. And for everything about Marilyn and the book, go to don'twalkaway.net, don'twalkaway.net. And you can follow her on Facebook and LinkedIn. And Marilyn, thanks for being on the show. Oh, it was my pleasure. I love talking about mom. Thank you. And join us every Thursday for a new schmear on Ira's Everything Bagel.